don't really reach the same kind of precision as their competitors. It's their strategy, and it's, I think, worth, worth respecting if you think it's uh, <coughs> material properties and build speed are uh, a priority compared to precision and surface quality. <coughs> Material injected into surface uh, by what David called laser cladding. Uh, the interesting part here is that you have the laser focus here and the laser B is there to inject all the particles from one or more nostrils, which makes it possible to have, uh, to have a, a functionally graded material properties. Uh, you get your three dimensional freedom by you simply have XY rotation and XY motion and rotation, you can get up to. Uh, 70 degrees freedom in this, in this kind of systems, but it's it's a it's a diff, it, it's a different approach. Good for some things. The lens has been around for quite some time without a number of materials. It's good. You could say it's the metallurgist process of choice. So yeah, you can do so much fun things with metals. Not only have you all these these are the ones that are actually well researched. These are in the development, last thing I heard from them anyway. And then you can also do this functional grading in between with different materials, so that's quite interesting too. too. And AMD, very close in relation to lens in many ways, also has the same kind of material. Oh, sorry, I'm uh, Different tool steels, uh, good for add on materials, uh, and they also put, have an idea to put. But other uh, than one of their heads on the robot should get six axis motion and a very large work envelope. Uh, on the other hand, it takes some time, so you should really start to build your own car with it. Then you would have to wait for a long time to have done. A uh, number of different alloys, they also have different combinations. Lace consolidation, now I could challenge for David a little bit because lace, they have actually the ones that I've seen that have the best service quality achieved of all. Can get RA values of what a nickel value is down to one micron, which is which is better than most cost processes. Uh, also, also up to set, uh, set up to six axis movement, movements. Uh, very good material properties, uh, not as fast as lens or DMB, uh, but on the other hand, because use of cost laser, but on the other hand, they achieve better surface properties and better. Better precision. Also, a little bit at the cost that they have some uh, build build relation uh, material properties are actually you know, more influenced by the direction and thickness of the parts. Any system. These ones uh, and better precision. Also, a little bit at the cost that they have some uh, build build relation. Uh, material properties are actually in more influenced by the direction and thickness of the parts. It's Canadian system. These ones, uh, basically you have a metal powder steel or otherwise mixed mixed with a binder, the binder the uh, it's SLS. Then the binder is melted, you build the green part, simply the infiltrate with bronze and furnace. And the other alternative, you simply you just drop on, drop the, uh, drop the particles on. Uh, you get based on stainless steel or 420 stainless steel and bronze, quite similar in, in other way. In other ways, uh, these two different processes: A6 two steel and bronze. It's steel bronze composites. You know. Ceramics. Uh, Phoenix are the only ones marketing ceramic uh, ceramic uh, material alternative on the market. On the process, it's a two-step process. In, it's in it's the binding first in by SLS-like process, and then uh, the, the parts get their final properties in the in, in the furnace process. It's quite good repeatability and it's detail. I'd say we have micron detail and 20 micron repeatability. Functional graded. When we do this very fast. On the market for uh, polymers, it's only object to market any system that can uh, produce function grading material. Uh, we talk metals, if you want to be very, very generous, you could have, of course, you, you, you could have different surface treatment, different surface coating, and then you could argue that comes a laser as a uh, concept 
place you do have uh, the option to vary, uh, to, vary uh, to do some surface treatment in the machine. And then you could argue that that is functional grading. Uh, of course, EOS can have <coughs> different uh, run parameters on the surface and on the, and on the bulk, and then you could argue that is functional grading. Well, yeah, in that aspect of the case. You can also have, of course, SLS with alternative power source, 3D micromac, which will make very small SLS or SLM part of things. I haven't talked about them earlier because they're not that big on the market. And then we have these valves here that have you just inject alternative power in the material. Let's talk about object. They have, start, they have made it in some machine called the Comics 500, which is the first 3D print system built for multiple model materials. You can compose so what they call digital materials that you print different materials in different positions, like a little box of, of one of a tango, or and then have a beer material, a box of that next to and then compose them together, and then you get some kind of uh, yeah, yeah, a composite material. It, it's and but it's also used for other things like you have over like making prototype or over molding different materials if we want to. <coughs> Plastic materials and origin materials. Uh, one minute. Sorry? One minute. One minute. Okay. Let's go on. <laughs> and then the metal FGMs. Uh, it's uh, like you, I, like I said earlier, you can feed different materials into the uh, into the melt. But on the other hand, if you melt materials together, metals together, then you have may have uh, may produce an alloy which may have different products, different. Uh, material properties than you expect to begin with, and that's the start and end, and things will start getting very, very complex, and it's nice job security for metallurgists working in this area. And, uh, yeah, I think that covers about what I said. They have different also, and also different systems, what, uh, you get, what you can get out of them. Then we go into the custom fit processes. They are aimed at manufacturing, but they are also under development, so we cannot exactly predict the kind of material hop we get out. We can just make a fairly estima fair estimation of what we do have. So to look at, at inkjet printing, it's, it's, uh, we, we get the addition by light exposure, which means we are uh, limited to curable, curable materials. The interest, but on the other hand, the special part about this, of course, we can use functional grading because they can, they can have different materials, and also since they have uh, more viscous, viscous uh, resin, then it can, then they can expect to get the, 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 the biggest strength. That means you have larger uh, polymer monomers or monomers within this resin. Uh, PPP. Make, Briefly, uh, the, adva the advantage here is that you can use a little bit more energy in the energy transfer in each layer, and you also have the pressure part. And put that together, you can expect to get material properties that's something between SLS and injection molding. Get more higher density, uh, and, uh, and, and also this bring a slight orientation of the molecules, even compression. Custom MPP, finish that one off. It can, well, materials are consolidated by pressure and heat. We have no melting, or not necessarily melting. So it means that the particles will be, particles will be deformed during compression, and then they will sinted in solid state sintering. And we can, fade because we have compression of very thin layers in the sintering, we can get high density and get can get the materials more reactive since the particles are uh, actively deformed. So it should be at least as good as we can get uh, <coughs> convention polymerology. That, that's a conservative estimation. Any questions? Anyone still awake? Uh, everybody's hungry. <laughs>